Okay. Uh, now, one of the things, uh, and this is something you must have faced if you have studied uh, algorithm subject, or ideally it's mentioned as design and uh, analysis of algorithm or uh, algorithm design and analysis, something like that, ADA or DA, whatever code you have studied for the subject. You study something called as time and space complexity. And the reason you study that is to uh, know which algorithm to use when. Maybe you have not used it that way because ideally we are not taught to do that because we don't solve a lot of real case studies. But the concept that you want to learn from that particular idea here, uh, there as well is that you should know how much space a particular algorithm uses and how much time it uses that algorithm to solve a problem. So that when you have very low space system, for example, an embedded system, a small chip, there you may take a few more extra minutes. I don't care, but please do not take too much storage because that small drone that will this particular embedded chip will go on will increase the weight due to the CPU. I don't want to have high, huge CPU uh, or storage capacity. So I have very low storage capacity. You can take a little more uh, computation, but don't take too much uh, storage. Whereas in case of uh, if you take very high storage, uh, I'll not use it for embedded system, but for almost all the entire other system, we have big data and all those systems today. So you should take as less time as possible. Okay, and mostly the time is only valued uh, space. We don't care about that much now. Okay, now uh, coming to the problem uh, in machine learning, since you have algorithms here as well, the criteria based on which you actually look at these is not space and time, it's training time. Okay, how much time it takes to train this particular model and then classification time. So how much time do we take to use this particular algorithm to classify some X into one of the C1, C2, C3 and so on. Okay, so these two times are actually what uh, makes one algorithm good or bad. Okay, so training time since we only train once. Okay, is not that much valued. Uh, it's, it's a simple reason. I mean, you train once. Even if you take, let's say three hours instead of 30 minutes the, to the next algorithm, it doesn't matter if you give better results because I only have to train you once and I'll use it for next, let's say next five years. So it doesn't really matter, but sometimes let's say for an immediate use or some sort of thing, you need to consider that as well. So we'll first see, uh, sorry for the screen. Okay. So you'll first see uh, this particular thing, uh, time of training for the algorithm that we have discussed so far. Uh, nearest neighbor or k nearest neighbor. Okay, since uh, these particular algorithms, the way they actually work is that all the points are already there on the screen or in the database. What they actually do uh, is uh, they basically come here. There's no training time because they don't actually train for anything. Only after the point has come, they start calculating the distances. Okay, and that is a part of classification because it happens every single time a new data comes before the data coming. They don't do any training, so they don't take any training. So it's zero time or constant time if you want to say, okay, so there's no training time for these guys for support vector machine. It takes uh, n cube actually it's n cube and how does that particular thing comes in is uh, something that is out of the scope. Sorry, uh, but since you know the logic of all these three, you can actually assume that I'm trying to figure out and sorting. First, I'll sort to look at for these points. Then I will figure out these two lines and then I will draw this drawing. This is not difficult. Figuring out these two lines for a n dimensional data uh, is and n here is the dimension of the data. So just try to figure out for n dimensional data. How would you figure out these two lines, which uh, which uh, the decision boundaries? If you can think of the logic, you'll be easily able to see how exactly are we able to uh, say it's n cube, uh, but it's not going to be asked to you. So it's not necessary, but still, if you want to, you can go ahead and check this particular thing. The discussion will actually take too much time. So we are just skipping that right now, but for the record, it's n cube. If you want to, you can go ahead and search that particular thing. Now uh, for decision tree training, uh, and this is actually a bit long one, but it's important because you will actually be needing it uh, for multiple uh, Thing, not only machine learning, but multiple things. So we'll cover it here. Okay. So for each of the node, because at each of the node, what exactly you train is that you have to check. Let's say I have uh, 10 different features. Okay. I need to check which of these features will be able to differentiate between the classes with the 
minimum number of steps. So if let's say I look at the, if I want to differentiate, let's say between a cockroach, a fish and an elephant. Okay. And I have multiple features like number of gills, number of uh, where, where, uh, let's say kidneys, they have number of hearts, they have all those things. And one of my feature is weights and weight will classify less than uh, 50 grams, uh, less than 500 kg, but greater than 50 grams and greater than uh, 500 grams, uh, let's say later than uh, 50 kg. Okay. This is my elephant. This is my fish. This is my cockroach. I don't need any other parameter. This is the purest one because it can differentiate all these three very well. Okay. So based on looking for the purest one, I need to have a look at all the D dimensions. Okay. Since for each of the nodes, I will need to look at the D dimension because once I have separated all the points, uh, I will, I will have to look for all the points left in this particular branch of the tree and solve the same problem, which I solved here. Okay. So for each of these, I'll need to sort all the points. I'll need to sort all the points, uh, based on that particular one dimension to see how many falls in one, how many falls in other category. Should I make a particular decision margin at a particular point so that I'm able to see how pure I'm getting the data. So for each of the dimension, I'll be doing n log n. Okay. And n is here the number of uh, items for which I have to decide on that particular node. Uh, and D is the dimension. So for each of the feature, even to know which uh, dimension or what feature I'm going to use at this particular node to classify uh, the total data into these two or three categories, I will take D times n log n. Okay. And D is for each of the uh, dimensions and n log n for sorting all of those data with respect to the D feature. Okay. So D n log n is going to be done at each node. Now at this particular point, you should be able to know that this particular process is going to take a huge amount of time. If my D is huge and this is basically a mathematical indication or a proof when I said that if you have huge dimensions, Decision tree is not a good idea because if your dimension is huge, I mean huge in terms like compared to the N or uh, N by 100 or N by 20 N by 30, you will basically have N square log N at each of the level. And even if you have log N levels of uh, this particular tree, you'll definitely have more than that. But if you have log N levels of tree, you will still have N log N to whole square, which is complex enough. Okay. So because of that particular reason, you should not be using decision tree at a huge level. Now, if you're able to tell this particular thing, now you will be able to figure out how many steps you have to do. And there's no fixed limit of the steps. I mean, n log n is the ideal case scenario. You may have to do it only once because all the categories uh, have been divided. Okay. Or you may have to do it hundred times if your uh, classes are way too, way too many classes. So, uh, this particular thing is for each of the nodes, how many nodes you will have to do that is totally dependent on your data. So not take a assumption there, but this is huge enough to indicate that don't use it until unless you don't have less number of dimensions. Okay. Uh, there's one more thing. Uh, since we have huge number of uh, dimensions, there has been one particular solution, which was predicted. Uh, the idea was that instead of using 10 different feature at a time, uh, one feature out of 10 at a time, you make a group of three use all three of them together to take the decisions. The problem there was that if I make group of three, which three should I choose and to know which is the best group, whether I should make a group of one, two, three, four, five, six till N. And out of this, I will have N possibility out of this. I'll have NC two possibility NC three possibility and so on. Even to calculate the, all of the possible groups to take a particular decision to increase my accuracy it takes exponential time. So if you're thinking of combining the dimensions and trying that particular thing, that particular thing has been thought out and it will actually make the computation even worse. Maybe some cases it may improve your uh, accuracy, but that is what you have to know. You will have to trade off your accuracy for your computation time. So you need to make sure which one matters more to you at the given time. Okay.